Okay, in this part we are going to take a look at how we can make an image plane out of um, these pictures of Rudy from 3D.SK. Uh, we're going to use image plane X, uh, which is essentially a cro two planes at cross section to each other that give us a front end, a side view. So to do that, the first thing that we need to really do is get a, a square image. So I'm going to actually go into the default directory for uh, ZBrush. So we're going to go to C uh, C drive, we're going to go to uh, program files, uh, Pixelogic, and inside of the uh, Z tools there is image plane cube and image plane X. We're going to want the image plane X and that's going to give us a template for what we want to be looking at. So let's just check our size. Uh, 1K by 1K, that's good. All right, so I'm going to move the front view in, just clicking, dragging. And uh, notice, you know, it's definitely a different size, but that's not a big problem for me. I'm going to get it roughly f the full height. There we go. And uh, drag the side view in as well. Okay, so now we really need to align these uh, along the halfway points. So there's a bit of a trick for this, or let's see if we can actually just do it straight. So I want to snap to this half uh, way, and then I want to also snap to the halfway of the front. Notice it's not snapping. So what I like to do is I just go in to Marquee, make a selection for this, Control shift n for a new layer, and then just fill that. And now I'll be able to, with that layer selected, click on the uh, ruler and drag to the halfway point. Then go into the Move tool, snap that over by pressing Shift, and then same thing, another guide, halfway. Okay, and then we can pretty much discard this. So now we can uh, turn these back on. Let's zoom in, and I'm going to move this over, and looks pretty halfway. Notice how his head's uh, tilted, and uh, it looks like there's a slight rotation, but in terms of the head, Looks like they already did some manipulation. No, it's just there. Okay, so I'm going to pull this over into a new layer, Control J. Move it over. Just get that rotated a little bit more. Okay, call that a day. And then uh, let's zoom out, check out our side view. And uh, I like to go for the pit of the neck as a nice uh, point. And um, so now the next thing we need to do is align these. So we're going to start dragging down. So I'm going to bottom of the chin, nipple line, halfway point or the groin. Uh, let's go right there for that landmark for the knee, and uh, let's go on the outside for the ankle. Okay, now there's some perspective, uh, perspective distortion, which you are just not going to get rid of. Uh, so that's going to be an issue, but we will just eyeball as much as we can and get it as close as we can. Okay, so there's a list of points. It's got some rotation, the nipples are you know, slightly different, but we're going to take what we can get. And right off the bat, the head's not quite right, or better said, might be too high. There we go. So that's fairly accurate. The nipple looks good. Um, pubic hair, that looks, you know, close. Not quite but close. Uh, let's check 
the landmark for the knee and the ankle. I didn't think the ankle was going to uh, kind of work because the ankle here, you see how it's closer uh, to the camera from this angle. So uh, I think we're going to have to leave that as just what it is. Um, okay, but I'm focused on the hip area right now, so let me see. Let's see, does the iliac crest line up? Sort of. And I think enough. Okay. All right, I think we'll call this a day. Let me just fill this with... Um, black or let's say just a light gray so it's a little easier on my eyes. Uh, I'm going to leave um, this arm out and in fact we may want to look uh, at kind of changing that arm around as well. So maybe what we'll do is uh, take a look through our uh, source and see if we can get something else. So hold on one sec. Okay, let's turn thumbnails on and I want to look for an arm that has the palm out like that. I don't have a reference picture with him with palms out. And uh, palms out is how I like to model uh, the default figures, primarily because it makes the uh, study of the anatomy and the creation of it significantly uh, easier. And I don't like to model with them out like this, uh, primarily because at that point uh, you know, there's a lot of re-sculpting that has to happen up in this area to get the arms back down and our arms are not up at that stage you know all the time so let's just pull this to the front and I'm gonna say scale this down scale it down further okay and then just zoom in so I can focus on this area Alright, so we've got some more work to do, but let's see, can we select the negative space there? Yes, we can. So let's move this off here and just delete. That'll make this a little easier. That was interesting. Okay, can we get away with spinning this slightly? See our halfway point right there, right there with that. Let's see, check our transparency. Okay, and we can see about living with that. Let's just kill all of this. Now I'm using this as a reference, uh, but a lot of the times, you know, I already know the anatomy that I'm going to be sculpting here. I'm not copying. Uh, exactly what I see. So this is primarily for proportions and for a sense of form. So I already know that this arm is rotated way too much uh, right here. So I'm going to be altering all of that. But what I want to do is give me a sense of proportion so I can quickly get in and uh, test these things out. So here I'm going to save this. Here we save it as Rudy. Okay, now we're going to come into ZBrush. We're going to go load. We're going to choose Image Plane X. This is from the ZBrush default directory. Uh, I'm going to load this, turn perspective on by pressing P, or it looks like it's already on. And then now if I go into texture and I go into import, I go into my master class directory, Rudy, import this, and see right off the bat, let's just turn uh, flat color on. 
And so there's my front view, and there's my side view. That's interesting, but I'll let that go. It's probably in my source. Okay, and now, so let me show you how we bake this in. Uh, baking this in is uh, just requires one extra step that does, isn't going to seem uh, intuitive from the beginning, and that is that you have a flat color material, uh, an extra one. So the way that you get an extra one is you have to first select your flat color, and then you have to go into save, and then you save this flat color uh, material in the default startup directory. So the default startup directory is going to be in Z startup materials, and you just save it in there. Then you can restart ZBrush, and it will be listed here at the bottom. So now you can select that one. You can turn uh, M on in the shelf. You go into color, and you say fill object. Notice it's grayed out. Uh, all I got to do is turn the texture off, fill object. Now I can go back to say the gray material I, I like to work with turn this material on. Uh, it comes back, so uh, my order here is a little bit messed up, but uh, we're going to just ignore it for now. We're going to go into geometry. We're going to divide this several times to bake this image in. So we're going to put it at 2 million. I'm going to go to texture and texture to color. Make sure that RGB is on in the shelf. And let's see, looks like we've got to redo this. So M, color, fill object, back to my matte cap gray, and we're in good shape. So it looks like that shoulder's a little high, but we're going to just kind of uh, run with this. So then the next thing I'm going to do is select my poly mesh star, import, import my 8 head base mesh going to divide it and then it'll look pretty much like it did in uh, in Maya. Go back to my image plane X, go to subtool, append, and append the head. It comes in very large and that's because uh, this image plane X is really one unit or it's really actually uh, one unit, one unit, so it's two units. It's a little bit large but what I'm going to do is just go into select the 8-head base mesh, go into scale, turn on frame, and then draw out an action line from the center vertice. Just click and drag. And then scale down. Zoom in. Repeat, scale, okay, just get it roughly in position. Now, move this backwards, whoops. So uh, we had perspective on. Let's turn perspective off. And let's turn transparency on. So now we can go back in with scale. And there. Back into move. And move it forward. OK, so we're off on the feet a little bit. I'm going to take this down just a notch, and I'm going to say call that a day. So that will be our model, roughly positioned with an image plane X. And then now we can continue uh, to divide it uh, and to sculpt it further from that point.